Situated between Alpe d'Haute Provence and the Vaucluse Plain, the Luberon offers a patchwork of landscapes. Most of its villages are world famous. One of them, Roussillon, stands out from the rest. Situated in the heart of one of the biggest ochre deposits in the world, its facades come in an amazing array of colors. Locals started mining this precious pigment in the late 18th century, and it made them a fortune until the 1950s. Today, the wind and the rain have taken over where the ochre miners left off, continuing to shape this incredible landscape. Artist Francois Tapiezo draws inspiration from these cliffs with their myriad shades of red. When I discovered this site 25 years ago, I was blown away by it. You can't help but marvel at it, because whichever way you look, it's different. It's new every time. The colors are constantly changing. This is nature at its boldest. You never see the same colors twice on the Sentier d'Ocre, even if you return at the same time of day. You can't help but be amazed at the spectacle of it all. There is something infinite and magical about this trail in the Colorado of Provence, because there is pigment everywhere. Look how imposing it is. Always different, always new. Legend has it that the red color of the Colorado of Provence resulted from a tragedy. In ancient times, the wife of the Châtelain of Roussillon allegedly killed herself after she took a bite of her lover's heart without realizing it. Her blood spread over the land, turning the soil this fiery red color forevermore. People's imaginations are as rich as this soil. There is actually a far more rational explanation for its color. The red dates back 110 million years to when the sea receded, leaving salt, iron and oxygen. There was a chemical reaction in nature and the soil turned red. This is the biggest deposit of ochre pigment in the world. It is a gold mine of pigment. For me, red symbolizes life and desire. I've always loved the idea of a sandpit, that childish notion of bending down and picking up the earth, paddling, splashing about in water like a kid. It's very soft. It isn't as coarse as the sand you get on, on beaches. It's extremely soft. It's astonishing. It hasn't given up all its secrets yet. I've been using it for 35 years. And I'm still discovering all the subtleties it can bring to my creations. Ochre has been used since prehistoric times. When you wash the ochre-colored soil to separate the natural pigment from the sand, its steadfast color is revealed. It is a key component of Francois's work. You take the pure pigment and simply dilute it in water to prepare the first layer of color. Here you go. It's completely diluted. It's a very liquid paint that I'm using. I enjoy the sensation of the brush 
on the structure. Sur l'architecture. It's like a caress. My work is done by trial and error. It's only by working with the pigment, by experimenting with it and trying out new things that I've managed to get such surprising results. But I make plenty of mistakes along the way. Sometimes the pigment takes me by surprise. It takes me where it wants to go. The pigment is alive. It's enthusiastic. So if you know how to make it sing, you can capture anyone's imagination. The pigment encourages us to go beyond the ordinary to do something extraordinary. In northern Brittany, between Pampol and Lanyon, these huge blocks of granite defy the laws of balance and create a unique panorama. The Bretons call this stretch of coastline Ard Arven Rose, which means coast of red stones. This red granite is very rare. It only exists in three places in the world, China, Corsica, and here in Brittany. This natural wonder attracts many visitors. The Coastal Conservation Agency is there to stop them damaging the site. Cédrine Marat has been in charge of the conservation centre in Plumenac for a few months now. This is a protected coastal area. What is good about working here is that you come into contact with nature every day. Every day you're out walking along the coastal path, looking out for birds and seals and checking that the plants are thriving. You're never shut in an office. That's what I was looking for. This part of the French coastline is an important geological site. 300 million years ago, there was a mountain here, in place of these strange shaped rocks. We are halfway along the pink granite coast. It's a very jagged coastline, littered with these big boulders of pink granite. This rock is formed from magma rising from the depths of the earth and solidifying beneath the surface. It dates back 300 million years, so you have to imagine a mountain range here, the Hercynian mountain belt, which was about as high as the Alps. So this would have been underground. There was this big bubble of magma that cooled down very slowly. It is that cooling process which created these boulders which appeared when the mountain eroded and disappeared. In fact, the granite here is 50% feldspar, and feldspar is made of iron, which is what gives the granite its red colour. It's called the pink granite coast, but depending on the day and the tide, you sometimes get a lovely sunset just behind the rocks, and that really turns them red and orange. I think we're very lucky to be out in nature, surrounded by geological curiosity like this. Over time, erosion has sculpted the granite. The resulting rock formations have captured people's imagination. Some of them are named after Breton legends, weird and wonderful animals, and everyday objects. I think the most fascinating thing is the sculptures that have formed naturally on some of the rocks. Some of the boulders have been eroded to form some very unusual shapes. It's all totally natural, but some of them look like real sculptures. Passers-by will say to us, I can see a face. And what's so surprising is the fact that it looks man-made. This rock has been nicknamed the Lighthouse Lovers. 
It does actually look like two faces kissing. You've got two eyes there and a little nose in the middle. The curve in the rock forms the curve of the nose. And that looks like two mouths kissing, hence lighthouse lovers. We joke with one another and say that the rocks are painted and polished every morning. And in winter, they get put away in the garage. But that's what people imagine. They think someone just placed them here one day after they'd sculpted them. No one can believe that they were sculpted by nature. That's what's so incredible. This landscape may look like Mars, but it has always been inhabited and farmed by humans. This place has had quite a checkered history. The nearby village of Plumenac was quite poor. Most people made a living from fishing. They worked as rat gatherers, collecting these big brown pieces of seaweed. Then came World War II, which left its mark here. You can see bullet holes in places along the coastal path and how the vegetation was damaged by landmines and tanks. We are now at the foot of the Menrose Lighthouse, which is Breton, the Red Rock Lighthouse. It is built from the same granite that you find all around Plumenac. This was built in 1947. The previous lighthouse was blown up in 1944, so this one was built just after the war.